Hello, this is Mrs. Brown from Research Triangle High School. The purpose of this presentation is to look at the three book structure of the novel Cry the Beloved Country. And by the time you're done with this presentation, you should have an understanding of how each one of the books plays into the theme of the story. So book one really focuses on this idea of how the family and the tribe is breaking down under the conditions that are happening in South Africa. And book one is really about a lot of separations. We see physical separations as Kamala leaves Ndachani, and we, we have these family members who are separated. We see emotional separations as he finds that he can't talk to his brother anymore. And we see spiritual separations as he even has moments of crisis in his faith. And he's not the only one to experience this. We see that Sebeko and his daughter represent all of the people that have been through these similar experiences. This idea that you can't survive anymore in the tribal village and that the family gets separated as people go to look for work in the mines or off to the big cities of Johannesburg and to become separated from everything that was part of their important family and traditions. In book two, the camera kind of pulls back and we get this point of view shift where you start seeing the, the larger impact of these issues. And it really focuses on the crime and the social issues that are involved in this big city life. And again, under the conditions that have been imposed under apartheid. So we learn about the housing shortage. We keep hearing about these newspaper reports of crime. We have these points of view shifts where the whites are very concerned about the, there's going to be black uprisings and that there's all these terrible things that are happening. We see pictures of people who have left the tribes getting into the city, getting involved with alcohol crime rings and theft, drug use, prostitution. We see that there's no political options for the blacks. They're not allowed to participate in the political process, so they can't really do much of anything to change the situation. And book two is where we really see the murder of Arthur Jarvis and hear about other crimes and shootings and have the trial and start to see the effects of this separation that we saw in book one. So book one is about the separation, and book two is about the consequences of what happens when people are separated from their families, but also from their family values. Now, book three is really where we see the theme of the novel carried out. And this is where we get this idea that you rebuild in compassion. So things have been broken and separated. How do you start to put them back together again? And this theme has been something that's been there, kind of planted all along. In book one, we see Ms. Imangu and his preaching and the friendship that helps to sustain Kamalo in his journey. We see that there are men of principle who still exist here in South Africa. Kamalo himself is a good man, a minister who tries to reach out to other people, although he's flawed. Um, we see Father Vincent, we see Dubula, who's the heart of the, the movement to change things. Um, we see white men who are defying the customs and the rules to try to help support the blacks in the boycott in their fight. And of course, we see um, the, the writings of Arthur Jarvis, who was trying to found these schools and reformatories to help the kids who had no other options. We meet the young white man from the reformatory who were actually trying to help Absalom out of his difficulties, and even Mr. Carmichael, the lawyer, who agrees to take Absalom's case for free. So this idea that you're going to rebuild out of compassion, and in book two, even though it's pretty dark, even as far back as book one, we were seeing these characters and these people of good faith and principle. So the theme that's introduced in book one continues in book two. Again, the writings of Arthur Jarvis with the beginnings of reconciliation as we see James Jarvis and Stephen Kamalo move across the aisle to um, understand each other a little bit better. Absalom's repentance and willingness to marry the girl and try to bring him into the family. Even the judge, although he you know, shows no mercy to Absalom, at least kind of admits and opens the window a little bit to recognize that maybe the system in South Africa is part of what contributed to Absalom's um, getting involved in crime. We see the girl is representing this re desire to change and to start a new life. And Kamalo has lost his son, but in, he's gained more family members back. He reclaims Gertrude's child. Um, Absalom's girl walks out of the courtroom and says, I am your daughter now, and he, the grandchild that's going to become, uh, it's going to be coming. And we see this compassion becoming more important than the custom of separation. So even though there's these traditions of separating the races, as people start to see each other in kindness, we see that this reconciliation can start to happen.
So under the structure of the novel, in book three, we see the seeds of hope that were planted all the way back in one actually start to blossom. Jarvis and Kumalo both changed their impressions of each other. Jarvis originally thought that Kumalo was sort of a pitiful figure, this old man, uh, kind of timid, maybe even a little stupid. And now he sees this good man, this pastor, whose people really love him, who's trying to work and has this vision for the future. And Kumalo also has a bit of a change, where he goes from this impression of Jarvis as a master that he has to bow down to, to seeing him as a caring part, a caring father and maybe even a partner in rebuilding. So this one black man and this one white man can start to work together out of this shared love that they have for the beloved country. And finally, the novel closes in book three with this comparison of losses and of hope. There's been some significant damage in this story. Arthur Jarvis is dead. Absalom was sentenced to death. Uh, John and Stephen have broken this relationship. This brotherhood is not going to be mended. Gertrude doesn't make it. She goes back to her old way of life and does not return to the village and instead goes back presumably to alcohol and drugs and prostitution. And Miss Amongo even uh, prophesizes and says, I have one great fear in my heart that one day when when they are turned to loving, they will find we are turned to hating, worried about people like John Kamalo who are now developing this, this hatred because of the culture. But at the same time, you do have this hope. There's this sense of a new family starting. You've got Gertrude's little boy. You've got Absalom's girl who has now joined the Kamala family. You have the grandchild who's yet to be born. You have Jarvis now, instead of being distant and judging, he's sending milk off to the children. He's bringing in people to educate them on farming methods so they don't always over, um, over plow and overuse their land. And we see Arthur's son, the little child, um, showing signs of being like his father, that maybe he's going to have this kind of compassion and this brightness to be able to reach out to others who are different. And the very last scene of the book, we have almost like a communion, where Kumalo goes up on the hills at dawn by himself, brings the bread, brings the drink, kind of breaks the bread there, and watches the sun comes up as he realizes that his son was to be hanged that morning. But it's also the dawn breaking. So it's this idea that one thing is ending, but there's a light at the end of this proverbial tunnel and a chance for something to change. So instead of all the losses, we really do end on this sad but hopeful note um, looking forward in Cry the Beloved Country. And that's the end. Tomorrow in class we're going to be wrapping up now that we can look at the book as a whole and see how the pieces all play in together and do a couple of activities and some little writing assignments and things as we go and finish working on your projects. So have a great evening. That's it. Good night.